Good day, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Lanfrica Talks. Today, we have our guest, Josephine Zingani, and I'm very, very excited for this talk um, to learn about her, her, to learn about the community that she's she built and she's working on. Um, Josephine, could you introduce yourself to our audience? Hello everyone, uh, my name is Josephine Zingani. I'm from Malawi um, in Southern Africa. I am the founder and executive director of Walolatu Collective, which is a community-based organization that is at a grassroots level in Malawi um, that works on feminist economic justice and empowering women and girls um, in their business, formal education, academic um, endeavors, and professional life. I'm also an international development professional. Um, I have vast experience in uh, philanthropy, um, corporate affairs and sustainability, and monitoring and evaluation and learning and research. Wonderful. That is that is really, really wonderful. When you say economic justice, uh, could you talk more about that? Uh, what do you mean? So economic justice centers around um, building policies that are um, equitable, uh, not just equal, but are also focused on e um, equity um, and also ensuring that women and girls are not forgotten in the policy making process or in implementation of these policies. Um, and when we speak about feminist economic justice, we're speaking about economic justice that is done and thought of, and that centers um, intersectionality um, with, a, with the understanding that um, economic issues are um, dynamic, they're very intersectional, and um, we actually need various um, multidimensional approaches or interventions to actually addressing the issues that are existing currently that are impacting African youth. Can you tell us a bit more about the founding of the Boilo Latu Collective, what inspired its creation? So uh, about two or three years ago, I um, in 2022, I, I was looking for a community. Um, I was looking for a space where I can um, um, touch base with Malawian women and girls, um, share about our professional lives, share about our, our um, entrepreneurship and jobs, um, and also find a space where we can um, collaborate and also um, provide visibility or um, also have that space to be able to say, I've seen a Malawian woman be able to do something that I want to do. And I now I can approach it, ask me to ask her how she did it. So we, we didn't really have those type of platforms. Um, and often you would find that the excuse that was being brought up about, um, let's say, women who are not being able, um, uh, sorry, leadership positions that were not being taken by women in Malawi. The excuse was always, we don't know any women in this, this sector. We don't know any women in this, this sector. So from my understanding, I said, okay, there is an issue of the lack of community building um, amongst Malawian women entrepreneurs and professionals. And there's also an issue of visibility. Um, people are saying that they can't find Malawian women professionals or entrepreneurs when they're sourcing talent or when they're scouting for um, procurement purposes. So um, I said, why not create a community? And it started off as something that um, I shared with my friends and they said, okay, let's do this and let's let's actually start something. And we, we started convening on WhatsApp and we started off on one WhatsApp group and Surprisingly, it started growing, it started growing, and we started getting a lot of uh, Malawian women and girls joining from all different corners of the world. Um, some who are um, living in Malawi, some who are abroad, um, and we would share information, we would share opportunities, we would share tips and guidance and ask each other questions. And how do I deal with this situation at work? Um, how, do I, um, how do I navigate um, processing a study visa for this, this country. Those small bits and pieces of information that might seem seem very minimal, but can actually, um, they actually push you forward. That, that mentorship actually changes a lot. So that guidance has really helped our community grow um, and also 
um, foster like a lot of opportunities. A lot of a lot of women from the group have actually got a lot of opportunities just from getting that peer mentorship and support. That is very very inspiring. It it draws love parallels to me with um. I remember when I started my research journey in uh, NLP for African languages, trying to make language technologies to recognize our African languages. When I started, um, like I thought I was the only one because it, it felt very a bit isolating. But then I, I searched was looking for communities and I found this Masakane community and that really changed my life. Like I met, uh, like. A lot of people sharing the same values and the same vision as 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 mine in terms of trying to empower African languages. And I remember that electrifying feeling of community, like having people with you uh, as a community and working with them. You suddenly have people you can talk to, people you can learn from. That is that is really 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 like. 10,000 times more encouraging than, you know, like going to formal institutes of learning like this, the role of community can really not be overemphasized. So it's a really beautiful thing in creating this community for community building and visibility. What inspires a name, Bualulatu? Is there a meaning to the name? Yes, there's a meaning. So in Chichewa, we say Walo, meaning space, and Latu means hours. So when I created Walo Latu, I didn't want it to center me as the founder or center um, one specific person or center specific ideology, but I wanted it to carry um, a sense of community and a sense of um, public ownership. So that's why we I decided to call it Walolatu Collective. Um, and we we continue to actually to live up to its name because um the community members actually take charge of a lot of things within the community. Um they're there and um they're often engaging even further beyond what um the volunteers and myself as founder of the board actually expected. Um and there are times when we have um trainers. Mm -hmm doing capacity building trainings, like CV building trainings, CV drafting trainings, job readiness trainings, um, women in STEM. We've had several women in STEM talks um, and also just doing peer mentorship programs. And these are always led usually by community members. So they're taking the skills that they've gained in their professional lives or in their entrepreneurship journeys and saying, let me share this information with the women in the community. So it's a space for all of us. It's a space for everybody to come and convene and come to, to share whatever knowledge they have or to also um, gain some inspiration from another person. Interesting. And it's it's good that you mentioned the, um, the CV training and the women in STEM talks because I wanted to know more about some of the programs or initiatives that the Bualulato Collective uh, Community has been doing since its creation. Could, could you share more on that? Um, what are some of the, uh, maybe some of the key programs or key initiatives that you would like to share? So our key programming, um, firstly, is that we share a lot of opportunities on a day-to-day -day basis. So we are also a point of contact when um, the community, community members are looking for um, information regarding different types of opportunities. And this is important, particularly in the Malawian context, because um, for so long, the newspaper, I know as outdated as it seems, the newspaper is usually the first uh, source of information here. Um, this is the first point of contact for people to find um, job vacancies, for people to find announcements about maybe government scholarships or procurement notices. So you'll find that sometimes what the information that is put in the newspapers is actually limited and does not um, does not actually hold everything that is out there that Malawians are eligible for. So we actually go beyond that. We go beyond the normal job boards and the, the normal platforms that are sharing procurement notices um, and tips. So we gather so much information from various sources and we ensure that the, there's, Malawians are eligible to apply um, and we share them on our platforms. So that is what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And with that 
people share information regarding, oh, I'm an alumni of this program. I also participated in this um, business development program uh, last year with this, this organization. I can give you information about um, about the process and what they're looking for and how you can you can package yourself to fit what they're looking for. Um, so that would be our main um, programming. And after that, we also ensure that we're trying to facilitate different skills and capacity building trainings. We have done job readiness trainings um, that were conducted by a group member who is an HR uh, consultant, um, uh, extraordinaire. And we've also had um, some trainings on um, different um, different portfolios on and what career paths are possible for women who want to go into different STEM fields. And um, we have done this um, in partnership with women who are Malawian but are working all over the world and in different fields. Um, some are in the not so known fields because typically in Malawi, you will find that women are working the traditional, uh, working in the traditional jobs, um, and the girls who are studying IT um, or engineering or software development will tell you that I feel so alone when I'm sitting in class because I'm I'm usually the only girl. I'm discouraged, and people say this is not a, a woman's job. So we brought together a lot of. Uh, different women who, some are software developers living in the UK, another one is a data scientist, um, and also brought together other women in tech to give us just some insights on which path, career pathways we can take. So we usually do um, skills capacity building trainings. We also have partnerships with different organizations, um, not just in Southern Africa, but also in West Africa. And we have done different trainings and um, talks um, on things like women's participation in the political um, and political and leadership roles. Uh, we have the elections coming up next year, so we're really trying to encourage uh, people to actually, the youth particularly, to actually be engaged and to also understand what policies different parties are going to, are saying they're going to implement and what does that mean for the youth. So we actually wanted to highlight the women who are um, participating in the political scene um, and we had different speakers. Um, this was uh, done with the Young Feminist Network, which is a feminist network in Malawi, one of the largest feminist networks. And in a, um, further to this, we've also done different talks on the economic impact, um, the sorry, the, the impact of a woman's, um, like a, the woman's job or career progression on, um, intimate uh, partner relationships. Um, this was done last year. So we do quite a lot of talks and how, um, we do a lot of talks on day-to-day -day life for women and girls. And we also do a lot of talks on different career pathways. Um, we are also embarking on several trainings. At the moment, we've also done other trainings with uh, Girl Power Afrique, which is a Nigerian-based organization on how to brand your business, um, how to position yourself um, to 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 actually capture the audience or the target market you're looking for, um, and uh, social media packaging for your organization and for your business or for your initiative. So we had about two cohorts for that program, and going forward, this rest of this year, we're looking at um, establishing a well um, a well built together peer mentorship program. We are also building up a scholarship training program whereby we're trying to encourage more women and girls to go for the non-traditional scholarships that they're usually going for in Malawi, and also um, creating more pathways or um, closing the dream gap on the academic pathways that they can take. And further to this, we're also, um, we're also building up partnerships with other organizations that are doing um, business, um, business events, business-centered events, whereby Malawian women and girls who have businesses and who are entrepreneurs can come and showcase themselves. So at the end of this month, we have um, an event that is happening here in Ilongwe um, in, a court, uh, sorry, in partnership with an organization called Kwatundi Kwanu. So we have quite a lot of programs going on at the moment um, um, as that are running concurrently with our day-to-day -day programming of sharing opportunities and sharing information. Yeah. That's really... Uh, a lot a good number of programs these programs are they yes. typically led by the community members 
Yes, so we have a group of volunteers. We have a group, of, we have a board as well that are part of the community and um, these people have been selected from the community. And also most of these initiatives are led by uh, the community members. Some community members actually say, okay, I, I have capacity to, to do a talk on um, such and such field or do a talk on uh, studying law, for example, and the different pathways for women who are studying law. So um, usually it's coming out of interest and we put out a call and say, if anybody would like to do a talk and help us to build the capacity of the group members, uh, please reach out. And then they, they actually um, say, okay, I have capacity to do this and I'm interested in, in doing a talk on this and this and this. So essentially we are community led, community built and yeah, we're a community focused organization. And is Bualo Latu the only such community in Malawi or are there other similar communities in the sense that they're doing the same similar activities in Malawi? I think there is, there's quite a couple of different organizations that are doing something that is similar. Um, however, we take a different approach in the sense that we convene on a daily basis. Um, and we are also looking at um, bridging that dream gap um, and ensuring that we're not just giving Malawian women the opportunity to, to, to do a skills transfer capacity building, but also giving them the opportunity to, to visualize what they could be by connecting them to women who are in the older generations or even in their same generation and saying, and this could be your, this is your mentor, uh, bringing together mentors and mentees, bringing together people who can give each other support and guidance and who can walk that walk with them. Um, so that's really essentially um, what we really focus on, um, just the community, the, the sense of building community, um, networking. We also tend to, there's conferences happening around. We ensure that we're going there as a community um, to also help build up the networking skills um, and convene at these different conferences that are happening within the country. So you, you're sharing opportunities um, on the platform on a daily basis. How do you know which opportunities are relevant to your community members? And I'm asking this because um at the land Africa community we a few i think early this year we started a similar uh program of what we call we have so we have we identified what we call underground communities and it just means that there are some people just to put it in perspective there are some communities in nigeria that don't have access to the kind of information about opportunities that like people, me over here in Canada would have access to uh, due to things like internet, but due to also things like the radar, the kind of things you look out for, the kind of um, the communities you're in where you get opportunities. So we started this idea of bringing different opportunities and bringing to this community so that they can have more opportunities. And there's this question of like, how do you know if an opportunity is important to your community members? Um, sometimes you just share it and then you look at whether it's somewhat what it helps them. But I would like to know from your experience with your community, how is there a way of determining whether a community is, is relevant to your members? And how do you do that? So what we what we do is that when we have people join, um currently we are two thousand members across two plat two WhatsApp uh, platforms, like two WhatsApp groups. What we do is that they we 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 usually ask if they could um, answer a short survey for us, and this is completely at um, their own discretion. Um, and we also ensure that we're managing and handling that data well. Um, and the reason why we we have the survey is to know what are they looking for, what stage of their um, what stage of, stage of their career are they um, currently at. Um, what are they? What are they? What type of opportunities are they looking for? What type of skills do they feel like they lack? Um, what would they like to build the confidence in doing? Um, what type of knowledge do they feel like they have um, to build up on? And which type of women are they looking to connect with? Um, which type of even um, mentors are they looking to find? So we usually collect that data um, and we base our sourcing on on the data that is provided to us by the community members. 
and it's such an interactive community. So you find that um, even if, if even after collecting that, I mean, submitting the surveys on a day-to-day -day basis, people express themselves and say, you know what, guys, I'm actually at the moment just looking for books on how can I manage my time better. And everybody will be like, okay, I'll send it to you. I can do this. I can do this. I can help you with this information. And that's how vibrant our community is. So there's also a needs-based um, approach that we take that is focused on whatever just comes up on the group. And people have, I mean, as the environment is changing swiftly, people have different needs. I mean, if someone joined the community last year and then at that time, they were looking for a different type of opportunity. And now they have sort of, change direction, they usually express it and say, oh, um, has, does anybody have information on this and this and this? And would anybody be able to support me with this and this? I'm struggling with this. Uh, we also get um, usually sometimes um, people actually contact the admins privately to, to, to ask us to maybe ask them, ask the community anonymously questions about how to navigate certain sensitive issues. Um, it's also a great space for us to just have that girl talk so we usually um, we usually work on a needs based um, basis. We also have the survey, and people actually come to like the volunteers of admins of the groups um, to say, okay, I needed this type of information. I wanted to ask this type of question on the group, but I don't have the confidence to do that. So we we go ahead and do that, and then we start up that discussion. And you'll find women sharing all sorts of information. I see. That's very very uplifting. I I can. I can relate to the you know people um, writing the admins to ask for um, particular things that they may be shy to ask in the group. Um, that that happens quite a number of times, and it's good that you provide that avenue for them to reach out to the admin directly. I think that's also part of the um, the idea of the grassroots community, so that there is no like barriers to entry and no barriers to reaching out to whoever you want to. Let's talk a bit about the role of native languages. You emphasize the importance of using native languages in your community and in your programs. Can you explain why this is important and how it enhances the effectiveness of the work that the community is doing? Okay, so um, the reason why we let um, or we encourage engagement on a day-to-day -day basis on the on the platforms and we've like let this be a, like an open space is because we also understand that language is important in knowledge sharing, um, cultural nuances and um, like cultural nuances help contextualize knowledge. They help contextualize concepts that might be difficult to understand and also bridge that gap between the te technical terminology and also someone's understanding, um, like a practical understanding. So, we encourage people to um, to share information in whatever way they would feel comfortable sharing. Um, and this also is about um, sharing information in whichever language they feel like sharing it in. And also maybe seeking a mentor who can help them conceptualize or share this or share information with them or guide them um, in a language that they are comfortable in. Um, and that's also because majority of the programs that you'll find um, especially international programs, all the documents or information will be in English. Um, and we do have um, great literacy rates in Malawi. However, there, the gap is still very wide. Um, and also the gap is also really wide for the women as opposed to the men, where you find that people will not really understand certain, um, certain words or phrases in English as, as their counterpart, male counterparts would especially in the technical or um, business sector well, environment. So we really, we really encourage, um, we really encourage that communication. We really encourage open communication. We encourage, we encourage um, peer mentorship. That is also based on people willing to share each other information in whatever the language they feel. And also breaking down concepts. If someone says, okay, I found this opportunity, but I don't understand what they're saying. Could you guys help me understand? We have that. We've had that quite often, where a lot of people don't understand how maybe an opportunity has been phrased on the on the on the um, hosting organization's website. 
Um, and this is also because the way people speak English here would be different than the way it is spoken in other places or understood. So we really, really um, allow for that um, type of communication because we understand that native language are native using the use of native language is important in knowledge sharing. Um, and it also empowers people and gives them the confidence to actually express themselves even better because they're thinking in the native language and they're able to actually speak in the native na native language and then say, okay, could you help me translate this into um, into English because I may be struggling to express myself in English. So we usually have quite a lot of um, incidents where a lot of women do not understand maybe some concepts um, or some the way in which certain things have been phrased and help break that down. Um, and also there is um, there is a really big gap in the way in which uh, people will express themselves or present themselves rather for an opportunity or present their business. So this is a, a very big um, issue we have also experienced where we find that a lot of members are struggling to, to really put themselves forward and narrate the story uh, very well and package it well in the way in which the end user will will perceive it um, well and also perceive it in according to the eligibility guidelines. Um, so that's also why we said let's partner with a uh, Girl Power Freak um, to do the uh, branding program. And in that branding program, we learned a lot about how do I express myself in the way in which the person will understand what I'm trying to tell them or what I'm trying to display and how I'm trying to present. So we really had um, we really had some success stories. We have some business women who have attended those trainings and who have learned a lot about how to package their business. We have a lovely um, we have a lovely, lovely group member who is um, one of our very very active members, and she has also done that training. She has um, a bakery, and she has actually gained a lot of skills and said, "I actually know how to communicate my business better to customers." I'm not just posting something on social media and saying, okay, this is, but then being able to actually elaborate um, about my products, um, explain them to the way in which it will capture my audience, it will capture my target market. So that's that's what we usually encourage so that we can empower communities. Um, we can empower them to have the confidence to share the knowledge, to also express and present themselves in the way in which they'll capture the people that the audience that they're looking to target. And that's very, very, very beautiful to hear. And I'm very happy for the work that the community is doing. What are some of the biggest barriers or challenges that the community has faced in the work that they're doing? And how have the team worked to overcome these challenges? So currently, I think we've we've just had a lot of challenges, I think, um, with capacity, we are a small group of volunteers and we are also lacking resources. So in terms of us being able to to also um, reach out or support our community better, it's a bit tricky because we are short staffed and also have maybe other commitments. So we've had quite a lot in terms of capacity gaps and and shortages with capacity. Um, however, we've we've tried to mitigate this. I mean, we we this year we introduced a new board, a full board that has actually helped us um, build our capacities, um, also help our advocacy and our programming, um, and also provide some guidance and strategic, um, you know, vision for the organization. And um, we're also currently looking at partnering with a lot of other organizations, and we've built up on a lot of our partnerships. Um, just to look at that capacity gap. So we have a lot of um, talent and skills in our group and say, and then we often say we don't really have the capacity to say we, we can do an in-person training on certain maybe agricultural practices or certain actual business development trainings and then do them in person. So currently we're partnering with another organization that um, runs uh, programs that um, that are certified by the government and Tiveta programs. So we were looking towards having in-person skills development trainings um, is particularly in the agricultural side. So a lot of people should watch out for that. <laughs> Those will be coming up soon. So yeah, we've used partnerships to build up our capacities and also um, introduce the board 
or to help us with strategic direction. And how can listeners um, support the work that Bualolatu is doing? We're always welcome to to having uh, community members join us from all over the world. Um, and the main way is also that people can get involved is by um, sharing knowledge and skills, um, helping us build our capacities. Um, and um, by doing this, you're also sharing a lot of knowledge that could be, um, I know it might seem like it's not so um, special to other people, but then there's a, there's a lot of curriculum gaps in our uh, tertiary and even secondary education here. So you find that some basic concepts are not being taught. So we're really looking at having a lot of partners who can come in and then say, I am an expert in, for example, AI, and I'm happy to say, I would love to do a training on fundamentals of AI development or um, fundamentals of machine learning, um, maybe do a six week course for the community members for uh, for um, their skills building. This, these type of skills can actually help our community members actually um, um, gain access to uh, more opportunities and also um, become more in innovative in the way they operate their businesses. So another way that someone else can say they would love to support us, they could always reach out um, with resources um, and also partnerships with other organizations. Visibility on social media platforms would also help us very, very much. And we're also looking for uh, partners who can help us with um, social media management, web, web development, um, because those are some of the areas that we are also lacking in. So if there's anybody who's interested in um, volunteering um, in those sectors, we're really welcome and happy to have you on board. Thank you. And just to confirm, uh, the Boalo Latu Collective Community, is it for women and girls in of and from Malawi alone or does it include women and girls from for example different countries in Africa at the moment we're operating within Malawi only um, however we have partnered with organizations outside of Malawi so our partnerships usually entail um, with us having different talks and training programs whereby everybody can join doesn't matter where you are in the world or or who you identify as. Um, however, at the moment, we only have capacity for our community platforms to host Malawian women and girls uh, because we're also already full. We're about 2,000 members. So we, as we grow, we'll be able to support um, and maybe expand as we build up our partnerships as well. But at the moment, for our community platforms, um, in our perspective, like um, social media platforms, um, on our WhatsApp groups, we usually only host Malawian women. Um, however, for partnerships, we're welcome to partnering with anybody from any organization, um, anybody, any expert in any field, um, any entrepreneur, and also looking at um, trainings and um, any sorts of um, collaborations are welcome. Let's talk a bit about uh, measuring impact. I'm curious. How does the community measure the impact of the sharing of opportunities? In the beginning, you mentioned that um, there isn't visibility and a lot you get a lot of feedback uh, from from employers saying like, well, we don't know any any uh, female for this job post. And then the aim of this, one of the aims of the community is sharing opportunities on a daily basis. How how do you measure the impact of this action of sharing opportunities on a daily basis? Are there some metrics or um, the success stories? How do you measure the impact? So currently we are working a lot with our success stories. Um, we often have quite a lot of success stories. Um, and um, okay, so I'll start off with the success stories and I'm going to our ME um, after that. So with our success stories, we've had quite a lot of success stories. There's countless of women who have said we have, they have gotten interviews or jobs through the I'm sorry through the through the community platforms, um, local at a local and an international level. Um, we've also had quite a lot of group members um, gain international scholarships. Um, 
And usually they wake up and just say, I just wanted to share this news with the community and everybody said congratulate. So we we take note of that and we're actually using that to to measure our impact and to see okay, which um in which areas are we getting quite a lot more success in and which areas do we feel like we need to actually build up capacities of group members. Um and we've also had quite a lot of um group members, and this is what we've seen, I think more um more than the the academic opportunities, we find that a lot of the group members are getting accepted into programs for business development. Um, a lot of our group members have been um, have undergone training with Graka Masao Trust um, on business development and women's entrepreneurship and economic empowerment. Um, and also a lot have done trainings with UNITAR um, uh, on trade and um, international and local trade. So we we find that a lot of our success stories are coming from the jobs that people are getting, and then also the business development programs and the training programs that are uh, being announced in others in, in uh, from other organizations. So we're we're look, really looking to building up the scholarships um, and also building up our group members' capacities um, for um, academic opportunities. So that's why we're also looking at building the. Um, we're launching the academic um, training program shortly. Um, with our MNU, we're currently building up um, our male frameworks, internal male, male frameworks, to actually say that we um, have um, a theory of change um, and developing that into something that can be measurable and um, concrete. And that is being done with the guidance of the board. Um, and as for now, we'll be, I think, towards the end of the year, announcing. Um, or publishing all of our um, male frameworks and strategies. Let's talk about some of the ongoing activities from the community, because I'm pretty excited for that. So listeners should look out for, you mentioned, academic training programs. Uh, could you talk more about that and if there are other ongoing activities that we should look out for? Yes, so we have the academic training program that will be launching shortly. Uh, we have um, a career coach, um, and a scholarship coach who will be doing um, the training, who will be conducting the trainings. And we have some group members who will have actually um, gotten some um, scholarships from the group who will be doing some talks, um, um, to, oh, sorry, who will be taking and conducting some of the classes. So this will be um, about a six week course and we will be selecting some group members who are ready to apply for academic opportunities um, at different levels and are interested in gaining more skills and building up their um, expertise and building up their documents to, to give them up for the upcoming um, academic um, um, application season that is, that is ongoing. And we're also, at the end of this month, we have a flea market um, that we're hosting at the Bingo International Conference Center. Conventional Center um, with Kwatu Diguano, whereby um, women and girls from different um, entrepreneurship sectors, uh, sorry, business sectors, will be um, having, a, a, sorry, presenting their businesses. And also, we are trying to have different performances there and having different activities. And yeah, that is what we're looking forward to this month. Um, in the following months, we're building up a peer mentorship program whereby we're creating a buddy system. So we'll find you a buddy for whatever stage you're going through. If you're looking at um, just having a buddy, a study buddy or someone who you can um, co-work with um, since you, maybe you're, you're a third year student trying to finish off your degree or you are someone who is trying to finish off your PhD or you're trying to build up um, your skills or you're trying to learn how to navigate um, business, um, sorry, business paperwork. So we're going to find buddies for our community members so that they can help each other, guide each other, support each other, and also be that friend that can pick you up when you're down. These all sound very, very exciting. Thank you very much again to the community uh, for the incredible work that it's doing. And finally, what advice would you give to others who are looking to start similar initiatives in their communities or countries? I think the first thing I would say is just start. Um, don't overthink it, just start um, and start from, from the heart. Like it has to really be from the heart. It has to be something you're passionate about because there will be days when you are tired. There will be days 
when you don't know if 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 you should carry on because um it gets tough it really gets tough but you have to you really have to 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 start something in a field that you're passionate about um and you have to be you have to be ready for the ups and downs um and also sometimes it can i think the way things happen in africa sometimes uh, can maybe demotivate to say oh, are we really creating change are we really helping the people that we're trying to serve but on those days that's when you remember this is the reason why i started this i'm passionate about this and i know that one day even though there are hard days it's going to it's going to be fine and we're actually making you know measurable uh, progress so just start um pick something you're passionate about um and go for it sometimes it'll grow bigger than what you expected i mean i just started with um, a community idea and it was 15 people one day and then the next I saw after some months it was 500 and then the next is 2,000 members so it's it it really helps to just start and be passionate about what you're trying to do um, and don't get tired in the process that is that's very very inspiring I'm curious 15 people 500 that's 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 a very <laughs> huge growth. How do you how do you how are people made aware of the community of this community in Malawi? Like you know, sh like cre awareness creation about the community. How is it done? Is it just your community members talking about it, or are there other strategies that that are leveraged? So we. Okay, so um, we also we mainly focus on leveraging social media, uh, and we do get a lot of inquiries in our social media um, inboxes. Say, oh, what what is this about? Can I join? Um, how can I be a part of this? However, most of our um, most of our um, visibility has come from the community members themselves waking up and saying, I have a friend I would love to join. I would love to have her join this community. I think she would be really interested in this and this is the type of things she would like to talk about so usually the community members are the ones who are going out and spreading the word so the most of our members have actually joined because someone else has told them you need to join this community you need to be a part of this yeah i see that that makes sense like <laughs> yeah. user network is always the yeah. most organic way to pull in other users especially if the work that is done is is very very uplifting like like the work that you, um, your community is doing that's wonderful it's been really really good talking to you uh josephine zingani thank you very very much for honoring us with your presence in this episode and for taking us on a wonderful journey through the Boalo latu collective community and the work that's being done in empowering women and girls in malawi thank you so much Thank you for having me. So thank you. It's been it's been really it's been really great. Um, and I've learned a lot about Latin Africa. Actually, I joined your Slack community, uh, but I haven't been as active. But I'm going to you know get my get myself more engaged now now that I know more about Latin Africa. So I'm also excited to be part of the Latin Africa community. Thank you, and thank you everyone for listening. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did in this conversation. Uh, there will be more episodes coming up in the future, so do well to subscribe. We will have other wonderful voices and efforts to share. Thank you, and see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening. Subscribe to our channel for more episodes. Have a wonderful day, and bye.